Yo, I'm Alex, and I'm making a game where you play as a Roomba. Alright, 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 not exactly. Let me explain. You play as this little cleaning robot on a space station. The space station, however, has been invaded by aliens, and they have murdered all of the crew. Yep, they are definitely dead. But I mean, you don't care, do you? You're just a little robot, you haven't got any emotions. Your only purpose is to clean. And so you have to stick to your programming and clean up all the dead crew members' corpses while also avoiding getting killed by the aliens yourself. I couldn't really think of a good name for this game, so I just named it Clean. But, but, like, as an acronym. So then it's all futuristic and sci-fi and cool. It, uh, doesn't actually stand for anything, though. See what I mean now, though? You basically just play as a Roomba. The first step was to create the movement. This was easy enough to do. I actually learned this from a tutorial way back when I first started learning how to make games. It's a, it's a pretty cool way of doing it, certainly a lot shorter than a bunch of if statements for every different direction. And also I didn't have to write it. Good old control C, control V. Then I did some sprites for the player character. Um, I'm going to do a pixel art game because I'm bad at drawing and that's why pixel art exists. It's for, uh, for people like me. I went for a Wally looking robot because Wally is also a cleaning robot, so it, it just makes sense, doesn't it? His name is uh, Wallis. Yeah, Wallis. Waste Allocation Load Lifter in Space. Yeah, there we go, that, that's good enough. And it's just different enough from Wally, so suck it, Disney. You can't sue me. The main mechanic of the game is obviously going to be cleaning. It quite literally is the name of the game. So I needed to make a mop for the player to clean stuff with. Now, this project actually started life as something completely different, but Godot really didn't like the main mechanic, so uh, I scrapped that game. Although I reused the same code I wrote to make the mop follow the mouse like this. That's when I hit a problem though. The arms. The arms. Oh my god, this really pissed me off. It took me two days two days to get this right. This is what I eventually settled on. It's a node 2D with two draw line functions. It was way easier than, than what I was trying to do before with inverse kinematics and joint nodes and god knows what else. Anyway right, once I sorted that I made it so the mop could clean blood splatters on the floor and then once the player has cleaned too many the mop gets dirty and has to be washed in a bucket. Which yeah okay uh, that's definitely not right. I sorted out whatever that was, and with that, I was on to week two of development. I started with the ability to pick stuff up. If you switch to your hands, any item you get close to will be highlighted in green, and then this little prompt will show up above your head, and you can pick up whatever it is you're standing next to. The problem with that is, who wants to pick up one item at a time? Yeah, forget that. It takes way too long. And that's why I added a box. It allowed you to carry lots of stuff at once. Come on, come on. You know what a box does. I shouldn't have to explain that to you. What I do have to explain though is a little issue I had when trying to combine the box and highlighting items. Godot, for some reason, tries to unhighlight the item that you put into the box, which gets deleted when you do that. And then when it tries to highlight the item, the game completely crashes. Why, Godot? Huh? Why? What was the point of that? Could you not just ignore it? Is it really that big of a deal? No. Instead, you throw a hissy fit and crash the entire game because what? You can't unhighlight something that, that doesn't even exist anymore. What, what kind of logic is that? Right. After that little hiccup, what, uh, what are we doing again? Oh, yeah. You obviously need a way to actually get the bucket and the box, don't you? So that's why I made these two machines. One of them dispenses buckets and one of them dispenses boxes. And then if you spawn too many, it stops making them until you destroy them. Because then otherwise you could just do this. Now this was pretty easy to do in, uh, until it wasn't. Right, so I tried to create an instance of the bucket on the machine's parent, which is the Ysort node, 
and that's the thing that allows you to go in front of stuff and behind stuff so that's why it doesn't look like this but Godot really doesn't want to play nice today I use the get parent function which obviously get the current nodes parent and literally nothing happened no error nothing it, it just doesn't work in the end I just had to write it like this and then it worked completely fine you could have told me that you know through an error message which is supposed to appear when there's an error after I finish this game I swear I'm switching to unity man anyway right back to actually developing this game the next thing I made was a user interface it's got a progress bar which uh, doesn't work yet I'll, I'll do that later but then it also has two little icons in the corner which display whether you have the hands or the mop selected I made all of the UI elements the same green colour and then I added this CRTV effect over the screen so it looks kind of like what a robot would be seeing you know what I mean bit of a bit of ludo narrative harmony there look at that that's a that's a big game design word that is see I know what I'm talking about I deserve a like and subscribe on the video after that surprised myself with that one and with that though we're done with week two Right, enemies, I need to add the aliens, the monsters, the villains! How do I do that? A few uh, <clears throat> tutorials later, I came up with this. It patrols around whatever path 2D node I feed to it up here, and then when you enter its range, which is this massive circle here, it murders you. And then I started on the sprites and the animation for the monster. I tried to design the monster to look fleshy and disgusting, although I am using pixel art, so it, it didn't turn out that way. <laughs> Listen, alright, I tried my best. Alright, how about you try making something look scary with pixel art? Yeah, exactly, mate. Shut up. And then I was on to week numero quattro. Now I needed to actually start making some levels for the game. I started with the tutorial just to make sure this game actually has one. I made this tile set for the floor and then this sprite for the walls and then I made the game dark and proper scary like. I also added this little animation that has the monster run past the hallway in the tutorial. You know just to, to let the player know what they're up against. You know what's even scarier than that though? The fact that we're currently on week 4 of development. And I haven't even made the first level yet. Yeah, right, I need to I need to get my arse in gear. The first level I wanted to make was the living quarters. It's a part of the space station where all the crew lives. Uh, well, I suppose they don't really live here anymore, do they? So I guess this is more like the dying quarters. I started by designing the level with my incredible art skills. You can now see why I'm using pixel art. And then I started blocking out the level in the actual game, as well as adding all the extra objects in the environment and dotting the blood around everywhere. The next level is the airlock and the cargo bay area. And the special part of this level is there's a part way up here in the top left, which is pitch black. And you have to use this lantern to be able to see anything. I actually came up with this idea because too many light 2D nodes were lagging my game. Yep turn that bug into a feature this tiny bit of the darkness is so that the player can get used to the darkness and they're gonna need to get used to it fast because this is the third level yep you're looking at it it is completely pitch black good luck with that one <laughs> now that all the levels were sorted out i added this little victory screen that appears when you complete level three nothing fancy because i genuinely couldn't think of a good ending to this game so uh you're just gonna have to deal with this and then i did the mandatory 100 hours of bug fixing and that is the game done it's available on itch.io right now so you can go play it and tell me what you think of it in the comments and if the game sucks uh tell me it's good anyway my ego is very fragile i've just bought a new computer and i'm going to be working on some 3d stuff next so yeah stick around for that Oh, and actually, before I go, just wanted to let you know I've set up a Patreon, so if you want to support me there, you can. I've also set up a Ko-fi account, so if you want to just drop me a couple quid as like a one-off payment, you can do that as well. And alright, uh, that's about it. 
See ya.